Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Today we have the ability to maximize today. Today is a great day. Today is the day that you will shine. To quote Dr. Seuss, oh, the places you will go today. And you can make an impact because you are being you. Often what we lack is resources and the proper mindset to make the impact that we should be making in this world. And so I want to help you with a couple of really great guests that are going to give us such amazing insight into sponsorship, as well as some deep learning on how to be the most impactful you. This is a powerful episode. There is so much good stuff going on with the guests that we have for you today. I'm really looking forward to seeing how much we can up level. I got to tell you honestly, you know, with both of these guests, I found myself kind of being a little selfish and just really kind of, uh, you know, getting the information for me and uh, also letting it get shared with you. Uh, Not that you're not important to me, but, uh, you know, I will be honest, I really loved the information from both of these ladies and they are so impactful, so useful. And uh, it was fun for me to just kind of sit in the chair, as it were, and be taught myself. Um, You know, there's so much teaching out there, so many things, so many people that are experts in things. And, And I don't know about you, but sometimes I find myself being like, oh, you know, with doing this show and doing all the interviews I do, sometimes I feel a little overcoached. And it is such a breath of fresh air when I get on, uh, you know, calls with and uh, recordings with folks like these that I can share with you um, because really they just up leveled me. And uh, in uh, addition to that, I then also get to share them with you. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what an impact this is going to make for you as you specifically look at the concept of sponsorship and then at the end of the episode we also dive into some really cool stuff about how having healthy nerves um, how that same concept applies to having a healthy mindset Um, i know you may be thinking it's like i don't see how the two of those are going to come together but it's going to be fun it's a lot for us to really be able to dive in. And more than anything else, like I said, these are two wonderful ladies who up-leveled me during a conversation and I just couldn't wait to share them with you to help you be the thriving entrepreneur that you're meant to make and be and make the impact that you were put on this planet for because you are so amazing. You have so much to give. The world is just waiting for you to maximize who you are, to be the best version of yourself and make the difference that only you can make. Because when each of us takes up the mantle, as it were, of today, to just simply not worry about yesterday, not worry about tomorrow, but just see what we can do to be the best us we can be today, then we can get a hold of information that comes to us doesn't matter whether you're listening to this live or you're listening to it 10 years from now when the information gets to you will be perfectly on time and it I promise is going to help up level you in such amazing ways like I said two great ladies that I'm really looking forward to sharing with you so that you can take this information and be the impactful you as you live every day of your life as a thriving entrepreneur. We're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. If you're 
an author who's on a mission, stand out with your brand out. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Yep, everything's marketing, and marketing is everything. Your existing book can become a best-selling book, or even, hey, like mine, a number one international best-selling book in five days. Listen, if your business isn't known by everybody, it's obscurity and that's death, right? The same thing is true for your book. If you're not happy with the way your book is performing, you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling, go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Schedule a talk with Steve. It's risk-free. It's guaranteed. It's proven. We've done it thousands of times. What are you waiting for? Yes, yourbestsellertoday.com. This time next week, you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve. Reach the people that you came to serve. Come on now. What are you waiting for? Grab a pen. Here we go. All you got to do is book a call, yourbestsellertoday.com. Go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Book a talk with Steve. It's proven. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. All you have to do is say yes to your destiny. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. You know, this particular recording, I'm about four months out now with uh, guests that I have to be able to bring to you. In fact, I may be starting to do uh, shows more frequently than once a week just because I have so many great people. But I got to tell you, this particular guest, I told her, I said, you know, no, I'm not even going to wait for the queue. I'm bringing you out right here. Uh, we just did this interview yesterday and it's just so impactful. And now I'm going to tell you in advance, um, all of what I'm talking about is just really basically things that I'm interested in doing for me. And I'm taking you along for the ride. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get such great information out of this particular guest. So I don't want to uh, delay things any further. Let's jump right into it. Join me in welcoming Jessica Chinlu. Hey, Jessica, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Steve. Thank you so much for asking and having me. How about you? I'm doing really good, thanks. I'm uh, really looking forward to an exciting last week of our month here uh, for those that are listening live. So tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Yes, thank you again, Steve, for having me on. So I'm Jessica Chinyelu, and I am a part-time content creator and influencer, but a full-time corporate sponsorship strategist. And if any of you are unfamiliar with what that means, um, I basically teach people how to land the partnerships or corporate sponsorships of their dreams. So if you're someone who hosts events, maybe you're a podcaster, an author, or even an influencer, or an online course creator, I'm your go-to person to help you put together your events, get partnerships for them. Um, and I teach people through my online course, Sponsored and Secured. Um, I also do train teams. So if you're someone that's looking more for like a done with you service, I train teams on how to do exactly what I do. Or there are those out there who are like, I'm just way too busy. I have too much going on in my company. So I'd love to have a done for you service and my consulting firm offers that as well. So I have a lot of fun. I've been doing this for about 10 years. Absolutely love it. And it's been so much fun helping people fund the events of their dreams. So now does it work the same for live and virtual events or is there nuances between those? That is an incredible question. So at, we all know that 2020 was a really crazy year and we saw a shift, everything went virtual. So yes, it does work for live events as well as in person. Just had an event for one of my clients a couple of weeks ago and she actually did a hybrid event where there was a combination of uh, a live component as well as a virtual component. So you can definitely land corporate sponsors for a virtual event as well. I'm going to put what probably should be the end of the conversation first here, because I'm dying of curiosity, and then I want to really deep into uh, deep dive into this. Um, how much money do I need to have up front to have you just handle all of that apart, all that part for me for an event? 
Yes, that's a great question. You have some amazing questions. And you're like, let's dive into it. So uh, we, uh, my firm, we operate on a retainer fee uh, for those who want us to come in and do a done for you service. That retainer fee, it starts at 3000 per month and can go any uh, and range from anywhere between 3000 and 5000 per month if it's a done for you service. Now with that done for you service, um, it includes us handling all of the admin piece when it comes to pitching to brands. It's myself as well as a team of three others and we are pitching hardcore for you. So we help you establish the, sa the solid foundation. What are your assets? How? What's your value proposition? What are the best fit brands for the event that you're hosting or the the programs that you're offering if you are a nonprofit organization because we work with nonprofits as well we develop your sponsorship proposal and we pitch that so we uh, ask you do you have any wish brands wish list brands that you'd love to work with um, we're going to tell you if it's a good fit or if it's not a good fit maybe find some competitors we do the research we put together the proposal we do the outreach and we even create the fulfillment report after the campaign has been activated to try and land you a renewal contract with the brand. We never want you to just work with the brand one time. We want you to continue to build that relationship because it's a partnership. So we wanna ensure that we go for that renewal contract and make this a long-term uh, partnership versus just a one event deal. Oh, wow. I am so sparked. <laughs> let's do an event <laughs> right now. Let's plan one. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, though, uh, you know, let's back up a half a step and talk about an event. How long should a person really be thinking between now and when they should do the event? Is it days, weeks, months, two years? What, what's a good time frame? Yeah, so, you know, Steve, it really just depends on how large your event is. Is this your first time hosting an event? Do you have any case studies to back up that your event truly is a valuable asset for a brand to come on and give you, you know, four, five, or six figures or millions? Again, just depending on how large the size of your event is. So I would say for someone who has a pretty established brand, maybe you've had a uh, partnerships or sponsorships in the past, you could do this and, and, and land, you know, a decent amount of money uh, within three to six months or six to nine months. Now, for someone who's just getting started, I would highly recommend anywhere from 12 to 18 months uh, for the planning aspect, but also if you're looking to secure a significant amount of money in corporate sponsorships, then you wanna take time to nurture those relationships. Because as you and I both know, relationships are key. You never wanna just go in and make your big ask. You wanna take time to have good conversations, establish like, hey, you know, a discovery call and, and if that brand, what their needs are, what their marketing objectives are, what they're trying to do as a company as a whole, some and, and understand really if it's a good fit. The relationship building is what takes time. Mm, that makes so much sense. So um, now is the 12 to 18 months, is that if I'm doing it and you're just advising me or is it still 12 to 18 months for a first event when you're gonna do it all for me? Yeah, you have great follow-up questions. I love your style. Um, so if you are working with me, um, we typically like to have at least nine months if it's a first time event. If this is your first time, you're a new organization, you're just starting up or you're a new nonprofit, we would love to have at least nine months. Now, my team and I, we typically see, uh, we are able to land a, a first time sponsor uh, for new brands, usually within 90 days, anywhere from 90 to 120 days. Now, if you're just getting started, we'd like to be very upfront and say, hey, don't expect, you know, the six figures or the millions because you're just getting started and I'm pretty sure you don't without any case studies, it's case studies, it's going to be a little difficult to try and get in the six figure range or the, the million mark. But what we like to do is say we can 
get you anywhere from four to five figures uh, with at least one brand within 90 to 120 days. I'm asking all these questions totally for me. The listener can just listen in. This is all totally for an event you're going to do for me. Um, how's that for a buying signal? Um, <laughs> uh, but <Okay>. in all, <laughs> um, so what if it's been, well, let me ask it a different way. What if the event I want to do has nothing to do with the events that I did previously and it's been a decade since I did them? That's totally fine. I think, you know, you have to think about you are the person behind your brand and everything that you do. So if you were able to host amazing events or programs uh, a decade ago, I'm very sure that you would be able to do the same thing now. And so it's about taking what you've done in the past and making that valuable or presenting that as value to the brands in which you're reaching out to. You are the person that tells the story. You are the story. It's more than just the brand. And I think sometimes, because I get this question all the time, like, oh, do I need to have, you know, thousands of followers um, to secure sponsors? Or do I need to have this? Or do I need to have that? I think I'd like to tell people, have a groundbreaking story, have a groundbreaking mission, have groundbreaking case studies that really can prove that you're worth it and you're worth their time. And that at the end of this campaign or at the end of this marketing, cause marketing initiative that this brand is partnering with you on, that there's going to be some type of ROI. And um, we always have to remember that piece because that's huge. And how do we get to that ROI? Are we sending someone down a funnel? And that's why that discovery call in the very beginning is key when you're connecting with these brands. It's also really important, Steve, that, you know, uh, with what you've done in the past, you know, that that's great. Those are great things to communicate. But another thing that you can think about is before you even reach out to a, a, a institution, you want to find out, do a ton of market research, you know, what are their current offerings? Where are some things where they're having some, uh, problem areas and how can you be a solution? So maybe something that you've done over a decade ago could be in fact a solution for that brand. And it's up to us as a team to help you put those pieces together of how you can be the solution for this brand. Mm, you have my mind spinning in such a great way. Uh... You know, this last year has been so tough uh, in so many ways, you know, every event was canceled, all of that kind of stuff. Do you see that there's more of a move to virtual events or is the world starting to open back up again? Yeah, so uh, I was actually just speaking with uh, an event planner a couple of days ago, and she sent out a survey to uh, many of her corporate clients. And in that survey, uh, she specifically asked, you know, when the world opens back up, are you going to continue with virtual events? Or are you going to just move forward, go back to 100% uh, percent events in person? And over 75% of these brands and her corporate client said that we are going to keep the virtual piece. And the reason being is because a, a couple of things, you actually have a larger reach when you go virtual or digital. Why? Because if you're hosting an event that is virtual or digital, you can now invite everyone in the world and save them the money from having to hop on a plane, pay for lodging expenses, pay for meals. They can simply do everything right there in front of their computer at home. There are some people that crave that in-person experience, but even without getting the in-person experience, if you have a great planner and you're a great event curator, then you're going to create a really amazing experience for your virtual attendees by using a great uh, platform, a uh, tech platform to host your virtual events. So I don't think that we're going to see virtual go away. And uh, a lot of these big companies, they're seeing that it's saving them money to go virtual instead of in-person. Do I think that we're going to you know, go back to having those in-person events? Absolutely. Do, are we going to see them happen as often and see these big companies hosting them as often as they once did before? No. No, absolutely not, especially since we've now seen the engagement 
uh, if you if a ev virtual event is done the right way, there's a very high engagement rate. The networking and connection opportunities to connect with people all over the world or globally, um, they're seeing a lot of success there. And if you have a really good marketing team and if you have good uh, event activations, which are huge, event activations for digital things, they're, they're, that's big. If you've got a great strategy there, it's going to be a win. And that's the key. Re those are the key reasons why I don't think you're going to see virtual going anywhere. It's here to stay. I was just going to ask you, I love that word digital activations. So, you know, when you go to a live event, there's all of the stuff that happens in the hallway and at lunch and all of those kind of things. And of course, obviously that's not going to happen virtually. What do you do to replace that and make it still as impactful and connecting as what those are? Yeah, it's so funny that you said, you know, there's no way that that can happen. And, and that's why it's important to research tools out there, uh, digital event tools out there to help you create those type of experiences. So there's a platform called Hopin. There's also an event app called uh, Wova, um, where they actually have created a digital way to create that experience. So you can have vendors uh, with vendor booths and they can actually purchase that space. So whilst things, the main stage is happening, your general session is happening. Um, when they go out into their breakout sessions, if there's a 30 minute break, they now um, close the general session doors, virtual doors. And now everyone is placed into a room virtually where they're just, it's just virtual hallway of just vendors and sponsor booth. And when you, you have the option to actually walk into these rooms, virtually walk into them, and then you'll pop in and you'll see the owners or the founders or the presidents or the sponsor representatives right there on the computer. So Hopin and Wova actually allow you to do that. I've seen people try to achieve the same thing with Zoom, but I just don't think that Zoom has quite arrived to handle something that sophisticated where you can create virtual sponsor booths or uh, sponsor activation booths. But Hopin and Wova are in two very incredible platforms that can help you create that type of experience. Um, another thing is, you know, when you think about your stage, um, you can create all kinds of unique backgrounds that you could have your graphic designer uh, design. And that real estate, that virtual stage real estate is something that you can offer a sponsor. Give them naming rights to that. Give them naming rights to a stage or to a break, a virtual breakout room. Give them speaker opportunities. Uh, something else that you can offer as well. Um, you think about it, look at it like this. So I'm big on ROI. Uh, and, and figuring out like if I'm going to host a digital event, you know, when we hosted in person events, it was big on we're going to have swag bags and we want sponsors to, you know, we want them to be on the the gift bags and we want them to be on the the uh, step and repeats and we want them to be on the uh, audio visual screens. We're moving further and further away from that. But if you can go to a brand that maybe offers, I saw a really cool activation a couple of weeks ago for a virtual event where they partnered with Salesforce. And basically the idea was, hey, we've got a database of about six to 8,000 people. Um, and they probably had more than that, but their partnership with Salesforce is, Salesforce offered every single attendee a three month uh, subscription with them or free trial uh, with all of the attendees. So now what Salesforce has done is, hey, if you've got 6,000 people attending your virtual event or however many people, they've now gotten their contact information. They've now gotten a ton of leads and that are probably more than likely going to convert because these are all salespeople that, are part, that were a part of this event. And so when you go virtual, it's super easy to convert those people versus in person and then Salesforce is giving this presentation. They didn't even have to have Salesforce do a presentation. They just simply said, hey, we're gonna have these influencers speak at this event that have been using Salesforce for a while. Let's let them sell it. And then we're gonna have some email follow-up or an email sequence that goes out that's going to have the direct link for people who attended to sign up for this, um, sign up for this free trial. So those are things that you can do and, and have a larger reach 
versus doing something where it's in person and so boring. I think that digital component is huge. Even offering affiliate codes, we're seeing a lot more affiliate links where companies are saying, you know, if we're going to sponsor, let's get, let's throw the affiliate marketing piece in there. And let's see what kind of conversion we see there. And then in your reports, if everything goes well and you market it well from in the digital aspect, then guess what? They're likely to partner with you again and also increase the sponsorship dollar the second time around. So I've been being totally selfish with your time. I do want to be mindful of our listeners. For the listener who they have a very, very small following and maybe no mail list at all, what, um, first of all, is it even possible? And what is step one for them to do to get started thinking about putting together an event? Yeah, really good because uh, a lot of people come to me in those early stages where they're just getting started. They do not have a lot of followers and those are actually my favorites. Foundation building is key. If you have never hosted an event before, maybe you're someone who has, you know, a hundred or a thousand followers on Instagram. This is your time to get your programs in order, get the foundation in order, get those case studies together. So you may be wondering, how do I go out and get those case studies? Well, first off, start hosting small intimate events that you can fund on your on your own or that don't require spending any money at all. It could be something as simple as I'm going to do a free training or I'm going to do a free workshop and I'm going to create a campaign all around this free workshop on mm, it could be something like for what I do, um, how to have how to. Uh, partnerships. Well, if you're going to develop strategic partnerships, you need to have have a follow-up. Maybe I'll say, I guess I'll reach out to maybe Asana or HubSpot or even Salesforce. Through that free workshop that I put on, maybe I run an ad on it, maybe not, only just promote it out to my email list. If I don't have an email list, I'm just inviting my circle. But I use that as a way to start getting some type of data even if there are only 20 people that show up or 50 people. I had a meeting with Toyota um, and one of the questions that I asked them is what is your biggest pet peeve um, when you get brands reaching out to you? And they said this, first pet peeve is when a, a someone or an individual has not done the research to see if we even sponsor these type of events. So you wanna make sure that as a first step after you get that, after you get your foundation together, you put some kind of like small case study together, then develop that sponsorship wish list and start researching the brands that are on your wish list to ensure that it's even a good fit and there's alignment because you always want to ensure there's alignment. The second thing that they said that was really annoying to them is when uh, they ask an individual, why should we sponsor you or why should we participate in this event? And they said, we can't stand it when someone comes to us and says, oh, well, because our CEO and founder has like 100,000 followers or a million followers on uh, Twitter. They would rather work with the person that has 100 raving fans versus the person that has a million followers on Twitter or Instagram, and they're not engaged at all. Data is everything. That's why that foundation piece is huge. So when you, uh, foundation includes, you know, your programs, what are the programs that you're going to be offering over the next year or two years or three years? Are those pro programs broken down into the who, what, when, where, why? Who do you, um, who meaning who do you serve? Who's the target audience? Does that target audience fit the same target audience of the brand that you're trying to reach out to? What is the problem that you are solving in the audience, in your current audience, when they come to your program or when they come to your event? When is the event happening? Where is it happening? Is it virtual or do, do you have a space? What are going to be the takeaways? What are they going to walk away with? And if a sponsor is going to partner with you on this event, what are they going to gain? What are going to be the big benefits, which are the assets that you're going to presenting? Also, in this foundation phase, when you're building that foundation, is this clearly communicated on your website? So if you're someone that's planning an event or if there's a program that you have within your organization or within your brand, that is, it's easily accessible. So if you reach out, you send a pitch email to a brand, if they go research you, they're able to see that, oh, 
yes, I see that article that was written about her, or I see that even with her hundred followers on Instagram, she's talking about exactly what she's pitching to us in this email or exactly what she's pitching to us in this proposal. You want to make sure that they see, I call them reputation assets. You want to ensure that they are able to see those reputation assets. Have all your ducks in a row when it comes to that website. If you do not have a website, I highly recommend that you get one if you're going to be pitching. And whatever it is that you're pitching, it is clearly there. Even if it's a coming soon, it's there. They can see it and it's visible. It has to be visible in order for that to work. Forget about trying to have a lot of followers. Make sure that you have those reputation assets in place. Oh, that's such good stuff. I appreciate it all so much. So for somebody that wants to engage with you, small or big, how do they get that conversation started? Yes, I absolutely love uh, Instagram and I love Clubhouse, that's the new phenomenon that's happening and I've connected with so many great people. I usually always recommend, hit me up on Instagram. If you are listening and you have just a really quick question and you're like, oh man, I, I need to hear this. I, I have another question, how can I do this? You can just follow me on Instagram at Jessica Chinyelu. Send me a DM specifically with your question. Now, if it's like, nah, -uh, I have loads of questions, I need to hop on a call, then you can click the link in my bio and there's an option for you to schedule a call with me. The other thing that you can do is go to www.thesponsorshiplady.com. When you go on there, you'll see a couple of different things all the different ways in which you can work with me. One of them being my course. If you are someone who's just getting started, the best way and the least expensive way is to sign up for my course, Sponsored and Secured. It's an eight week program where I literally walk you through the step-by-step -step process, especially those who are just getting started. I walk you through the step-by-step -step process of how to land your first corporate sponsor. Even if you've already landed sponsors before, but you're like, I'm trying to get beyond the $1,000 or $2,000, I'm looking to get to five figures or six figures, this is a course for you. Now, with the course, I have everyone on a track to at least reach $1,000 within 90 days or less. It's so doable. So that is for the people who are in the beginning phases. Now, if you're someone who's like, I really need more one-on-one -on -one support, I have an application on my website. Again, it's thesponsorshiplady.com and you can fill out that application to work with me. If you're like, I need to hop on a call now, like I said, uh, click the link in my bio. And if you are interested for that done for you service, I do have an application, shoot me a DM and I can send that link over to you to apply. But those are the ways in, in which you can start connecting with me and engaging with me and having some conversations. I love sending voice notes on Instagram because I, I think it's just a super personal way to connect with people. And sometimes you may just have a really quick question. I'm always happy to answer those super quick questions. You are so awesome, Jessica. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I absolutely enjoyed the time, Steve. Thank you. I told you Jessica was going to be a great guest. I so appreciate you being here with us, Jessica. It is just so cool to think about the fact that there are businesses, even when you're a small company, that want to promote what you're doing. They want to promote your podcast, your events, the things that your company is about in the world. They want to do good things. And um, it's so cool to know that there are people that have that system worked out because it is a system and we do need somebody who's really powerfully uh, good at doing that because if not, you're going to find yourself drowning out in the middle of the ocean of, of that sponsorship thing and wishing you had help. So with that all said, I do hope that you'll contact Jessica and that you got a lot of great information out of this. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And we will be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. If you're an author who's on a mission, stand out with your brand out. 
<laughs> Check this out, guys. Yep, everything's marketing, and marketing is everything. Your existing book can become a best-selling book, or even, hey, like mine, a number one international best-selling book in five days. Listen, if your business isn't known by everybody, it's obscurity and that's death, right? The same thing is true for your book. If you're not happy with the way your book is performing, you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling, go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Schedule a talk with Steve. It's risk-free. It's guaranteed. It's proven. We've done it thousands of times. What are you waiting for? Yes, yourbestsellertoday.com. This time next week, you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve. Reach the people that you came to serve. Come on now. What are you waiting for? Grab a pen. Here we go. All you got to do is book a call, yourbestsellertoday.com. Go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Book a talk with Steve. It's proven. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. All you have to do is say yes to your destiny. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. In the last segment, we were talking about sponsorship. And, you know, it's a little longer than some of our segments are because there's just so much great information. I thought about breaking in in the middle. I was like, no, nah, we're on a roll. And it's such a exciting conversation that I just stuck with it through the whole time here in post when we're doing the editing. Now I want to take a turn from the external to the internal, as it were, to our mindset, to what we as leaders need to combat before we can have that right story to be able to get our sponsorship and do those things. How can we be the most impactful version of ourselves? And I'm so blessed to have this next guest who is a total expert and has taken something very clinical and moved it into something that really is going to up-level you. As I said in the intro, another one of these uh, guests that just totally up-leveled me during the course of the conversation, and I'm excited to be able to bring her to you now. Join me in welcoming Melanie Weller. Hi, Melanie. How are you doing today? I'm great, Steve. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Sure. I uh, have been a physical therapist for about 25 years, and I was an athletic trainer before that. So I've been treating people for the better part of 30 years. And I'm, uh, I'm transitioning more and more, getting more clients, really doing leadership development. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about kind of where that, like how that connection came from. <laughs> My background is in treating the people that had not found success in the medical system traditionally. And so I saw a lot of complicated chronic pain and just people that had ongoing things that hadn't gotten better for a long, long time. And I ultimately branded myself as a stress management expert. And my clinical expertise is in treating the vagus nerve as a pinched nerve. And your vagus nerve is your big stress and pleasure mediating pathway in the body. It is your body's influencer. When the vagus nerve is functioning well, your body, everything in your body is functioning well. It has a huge amount of influence. It goes from your uh, brainstem down to your pelvis. It innervates your vocal cords. It innervates your heart. It innervates your digestive system. And that's just skimming the surface of what it does. And in spending a lot of time with these more complicated uh, clients, I realized how what was happening inside of their body was the same thing that was happening outside of their body in metaphorical terms. They was having the same, the story that was happening inside of their body was playing out metaphorically in their lives. And so I have taken my uh, I'm kind of reversing, I've reverse engineered my system rather than treating the body to change the um, story that's going on, to treat the story in the life so that the physical expression of their life transforms. And I guess for, as far as where I came from, this is really, uh, um, you know, my, uh, 
my story is very much rooted in lost voice. And as the vagus nerve innervates the voice and, uh, and is really the bridge between our bodies and our stories, it gives a voice to our stories, a physical expression of our internal narrative, and it gives the internal expression of our physical narratives. Uh, that this, um, you know, I think we all do what we need most to heal ourselves. <laughs> and so this has just been a really fun and amazing and profound amplification of, um, you know, my own journey and finding my own harmony within the world. <laughs> so that's really fascinating. In fact, I'm glad you told us what the vagus nerve was because that would have been my first question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for a layman, for somebody that doesn't know, mm -hmm. you know, probably didn't even know what their vagus nerve was like sure. until then, what is the best place to start to have better and this might never be the right phrase, but better vagus nerve health. Well, I'll tell you, I think the, the first thing that you should do is go to my website at melaniewelder.com and sign up for my email list and then it will email you my free vagus nerve decompression course. We, uh, there Perfect. are many things that improve vagus nerve function. We're most familiar with it when we get a lump in our throats and our palms sweat and our hearts start to race and our digestion shifts because those are all vagus nerve mediated functions and your vagus nerve when we get nervous like that gets dialed down and so things like meditation and mindfulness and singing and humming and um, you know there's even some evidence that cold showers and saying uh, chanting om <laughs> things like that will all improve your vagus nerve function the you know, I guess coming from people, from, uh, from treating um, a lot of people that do those things that still did not have success, <laughs> you know, I, I love going one step deeper. Like, how can we make this happen better, faster, and really help you get, help you find the shortest path to your highest potential? Because I think very often we make healing and transformation within our lives, you know, whether it's a medical situation or, uh, you know, trying to get your business to a place where it's really thriving and healthy, that we make it really way too hard. <laughs> I think there's, there's very often an easier way. Okay, so let me ask you a totally unfair question because yes, people sure. do need to go to your website and get that free download, absolutely. But tease us just a little bit. Tell us of the five of them, your favorite one? Oh, my favorite exercise, out, hands down, is for the diaphragm. And um, in all humans, the, our respiratory diaphragm, the muscle that we breathe with, has, we have more muscle mass on the right side than we do on the left. So theoretically, the right side will always win. And so a lot of people are really locked down, particularly on the right side of their diaphragm. And your diaphragm has many, many attachments. And for example, one of the attachments is into your hip flexors. So uh, I've resolved many a back pain patient that has really been struggling for long, long, for long periods of time by restoring their diaphragm function because uh, their diaphragm is not functioning well and it's locking up their hip flexors and they're functionally stuck in the fetal position, but they're walking upright and the amount of compensation they have to do to do that, to accomplish that is enormous. So the first, so the exercise uh, to do that is uh, sitting in a chair in your kind of a, a, a good posture yeah, at the, at the edge, front edge of a chair, ideally not sitting all the way back uh, to cross your left ankle in front of your right and just very gently squeeze your ankles together. It doesn't, you don't have to put a lot of force by any means, just think like a pound or two of force so that you have a little bit of pressure between your ankles. And then you take your right hand and put it on the outside of your left thigh or as close as you can get to that. And then you take your left hand and put it behind your head. So you're sort of wound up <laughs> in this position, but you're just facing forward. You don't have to twist your, you know, your spine to any extreme range of motion. You know, I do this all with people uh, to start with um, in a neutral 
posture. And then I have people inhale for a count of five, hold your breath for a count of eight, and then exhale like you're blowing up a balloon or blowing through a straw or blowing out a candle for a count of 13 or as long as you can. And if you can't do the five, eight, 13, you can do a three, five, eight, inhale for three, hold for five, and exhale for eight. But very often, three to five repetitions of that exercise makes a huge difference in flexibility and pain and shock absorption with movement. And on a more, on a bigger scale, when we, our diaphragms get locked down to the right, I believe that we are literally out of alignment on a much more fractal kind of scale because the earth below us and the solar system above us all spin the opposite direction. And that when we think mm -hmm. about alignment, we just think way too small about it. That's so interesting. Wow. So um, let's, talk the other direction. What's the biggest thing that people do that is bad for, you know, their alignment, their health? Oh, uh, I would say in my client population, a lot of it is uh, adaptability, being too adaptable or not adaptable enough <laughs> that uh, in, in the in the chronic pain population you see a lot of people who function as the as everybody else's doormat in their lives and just getting them to a place where they can even feel like identify feel or identify something that they want for themselves <laughs> and an emotion that's actually theirs versus the way somebody told them they should feel can be, is sometimes very challenging. And you have to peel back some layers even to get to that point. And we all know somebody who's addicted to being right. And we are, you know, to some extent wired that way. We get a dopamine release when we feel we're right. And so it feels great to be right. And it can be very difficult to admit that we're wrong, especially around some, you know, d deep fundamental truths, you know, or ways that we've always lived and ways that our families have lived for generations. Mm. So even though, you know, your medical practice is working with people's nerve endings, a lot of what it sounds like you're doing is more almost more psychology. It is. There's definitely a big psychological component to it. I've taught at the Jung Center in Houston, and the Jung, Jungian psychologists uh, really get what I do on a big scale. And the, um, you know, our, you know, I, we all have a physical expression of our internal narrative. You know, like our body, our, your vagus nerve is really the bridge between your, sto your body and your story. And so when, we, when our story is trauma, our vagus nerve gets really dialed down. When our story is purpose and pleasure and connection, then our vagus nerves get dialed up. And so finding... And certainly in the psychology realm, you know, finding meaning is a very important part of overcoming trauma and uh, healing. It is, uh, but your, your vagus nerve, like in that story, is also the, an important part of the pathway where athletes and entertainers get in, are most known to be in the zone and have great performances. And so you can really leverage your Neuro, your, neuro, your neurology with your story to not only to resolve your trauma, but to Im, improve your performance in life. And so I bridge really that body and that story piece. And a lot of times what's happened, you know, what I have seen in my clients is that, you know, what's happening in their physical body is the same thing that's happening in their business. If they're having a voice 
issue, they're very often having a voice issue or an issue finding their visit business voice or getting their business voice to land. And if they're having an issue with their business vision, it's because their heroics and their desires are at odds with each other. And I'll tell you more specifically the way that that shows up in the way that story lives in the body. And I think this is something that ancient cultures really understood because mythology was a mode of transmitting scientific information. So for example, uh, Western astrology is the easiest way to understand this, but the ventricles in your brain that make cerebral spinal fluid look just like the ram's horns for Aries, and in astrology, Aries rules the head. And the way your hyoid bone in the throat sits on top of your larynx looks very much like the symbol for Taurus, and Taurus rules the throat. And the aortic, the aortic arch is the same shape as the symbol for Leo, and Leo rules the heart, and it works this way the whole way through the body. It works across different different mythologies in, in different systems. The Vedas tell the story of our anatomy as well. The story of the Temple of the Ark of the Covenant describes cranial anatomy in significant detail. And so when somebody's heroics are at odds with their desires, it's that Aries ram and the Taurus bull locking horns with each other. And that they're, I've created an energy medicine system out of all of this. And sometimes those, those energies need to need some help getting unlocked from each other, getting, um, they're distorted and that they need some, uh, some restoration. And in all of my years of practice, I will tell you that when you treat the physical body, sometimes the story changes but when you treat the story, the physical body, and the physical manifestation of you know, what's going on in life always changes. And I, I just am so passionate about this idea of treating story and, and using the mythology and these other um, systems to, uh, to help tell people about what's going on with them because we're often very much so like stuck, or just stuck in our stories. And the difference between somebody that has acute, subacute pain and somebody that has chronic pain is that chronic pain gets locked in your limbic system, which is where our emotions are stored. And you need an emotional key to get it out of there. And you can technical talk someone all day long and they will not, they are unlikely to have an emotional reaction. When you tell them a story, you get on the superhighway to unlocking them from their story. The neuroscience of storytelling is overwhelmingly amazing, and you know we should medically we should all be using it much more than our technical talk because it really helps to unlock those deep restrictions and get people out of their old story and into a new one. So I know there's people that are going to want to go deeper with you on this. Give us your uh, URL again where they can go to start connecting. Sure. It's my name, MelanieWeller.com, M-E-L-A-N-I-E-W-E-L-L-E-R. Well, Melanie, I really appreciate this information. It's absolutely fascinating. And I appreciate you being on the show with us here today. Thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate it, too. This is a great opportunity for me. Wow, that's such great stuff. I hope that you learned as much from it as I did and that you will begin to apply those kind of things so that you can truly be the impactful you in the world. The world really truly does need you to be who you are and do all that you do because we need you so much. That's really the secret, if you will, in the world. And that's each of us just simply purely being who we were meant to be. If each of us could just fill the spot today, I'm not talking about, you know, every single day and we'll have days where we fall, but if we just fill the spot today of being the best version of ourselves while it's called today, tomorrow will take care of itself. And yesterday can't be changed. If you had things that happened yesterday that you need to deal with, to apologize for, to make amends for, then do so and move forward. Because you can't change it. All we can do is be the best version of ourselves today. In whatever that means. Whether that's getting good rest so we can take good 
care of ourselves um, or whether it is uh, something more deep, doing the deep work, or maybe it's sharing love and compassion with the people around us. Whatever is you being the best you you can be today, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to contact both of these guests. They have such great stuff for you to help you show up in the world as the person that you're meant to be and make that difference that only you can make. I want to talk to you for the last minute or so here um, really in detail about you to make the impact that you're meant to make. Now, you've heard the commercials. Um, you've heard me talk about it now for, you know, the show's been around for like six and a half years now. But I want you to understand, you have a purpose. I say it every week, right? You are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose. And the world needs you. Now is the time. Today is the day to take up the banner of being you. And that does mean making that impact that you're meant to make. Being the you that you were created to do and sharing your stuff with the world. The truth of the matter is, is all of our giftings, all of our knowledge, all of the things within us are really only given to us for one reason. And that reason is for the people that it's meant to help. It doesn't do us any good. It doesn't matter if you are the greatest singer in the world if nobody ever hears your voice. It doesn't matter if you are so brilliant that you scoff at Einstein's lack of brilliance if you don't use that brilliance to make the world a better place. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest mom on the planet if you're not being a mom. I mean, it doesn't matter what the thing is. It's about each of us being the impactful you that we're meant to be and then sharing that with the world, whether it be the little babies that you're meant to raise to be great people or it be the world leaders whose lives you will change and impact. On every single one of those levels, yes, there absolutely is a book. There is a signature talk. There is a message that does absolutely need to be shared with the world. And I so strongly encourage you, now is the time. Today is the day that you know is here. Today is the day to maximize while it's called today and be the impactful you right here in the space that you're in right now. Let tomorrow come and be what tomorrow will be, but be strong, confident, aware and proudly powerful as you today. There's nothing better that you can do. There's no better way in this world to thrive than to simply maximize who you are while it's called today and be the impactful you. Thank you so much in advance for all that you do. I hope that you are happy, safe, warm and loved, that you live in joy, and that if even you're in darkness, you know that the sun will shine. And until we're together again next time, that you have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. author who's on a mission stand out with your brand out <laughs> check this out guys yep everything's marketing and marketing is everything your existing book can become a best-selling book or even hey like mine a number one international best-selling book in five days listen if your business isn't known by everybody it's obscurity and that's death right the same thing is true for your book if you're not happy with the way your book is performing you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling go to yourbestsellertoday.com schedule a talk with steve
believe. It's risk-free. It's guaranteed. It's proven. We've done it thousands of times. What are you waiting for? Yes, yourbestsellertoday.com. This time next week, you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve. Reach the people that you came to serve. Come on now. What are you waiting for? Grab a pen. Here we go. All you got to do is book a call, yourbestsellertoday.com. Go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Book a talk with Steve. It's proven. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. All you have to do is say yes to your destiny. You